Video is starting. Go. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We just got our Q&A. Now we're in our Bible study. Tonight's lesson, God's will and prayer. We have to realize, church, we're living in the last and evil days. Prayer is the only thing that's going to sustain us. We got to get in the Word and pray. Amen. Prayer, fasting, pushing our faith back, that's what's going to help us through this, this end time. Because let me tell you something, Jesus is soon to come. All you have to do is look up on the TV, look what's going on in the world, and Jesus is soon to come. And I do not want to spend eternity in hell. I'm going to say that again. I do not want to spend eternity in hell. There's only two places you can go, heaven or hell. You can't miss them both. So if you have a relationship with Christ, you're going to heaven. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you're going to hell. So you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss the mark. The Bible, when you talk about hell, the Bible says it's a dark place. Amen. There'll be gnashing of teeth. Amen. 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 Screaming. Amen. Fire. You never burn up. Then he said the fire is 77 times hotter than regular fire. That's hot. And you never burn up. Mm. You just burn forever. Amen. Woo! Can you just imagine just burning forever and never burn up? Oh, I do not want to go there. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So we must pray. Mm -hmm. We must build our relationship with Christ. We must get into our word. So tonight we have, amen, a few of us here at the JHC house, and we're going to read our scriptures, our background scriptures, and we're going to get into our Bible study. All right, Sister Glory, Sister Admin Glory is going to start us off with uh, our scripture. Okay, Matthew 6 and 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. 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 All right. Happy feet 2. Ephesians 5. Yes, sir. 5 and 17. Yes, sir. Follow God's example in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Let's <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should, be, should obtain from fornication. And First Thessalonians uh, chapter five verse eighteen. Yeah. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Hebrews thirteen. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you. We thank God for you tonight joining us in our Bible study tonight. We're talking about God's will and prayer. We heard the reading of the scriptures. Tonight, our simple verse says, He that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So you, God knows our mind. He knows our spirit. So we must, amen. We can't fool God. Amen. We, 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 we cannot fool God. Amen. If we're going to serve God, we must serve God in spirit and in truth. Amen. amen. And a lot of times what happens is the enemy, the enemy, he tries to make us doubt God. Sometimes we go through trials and tribulations. Sometimes we go through, I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't sit still. I got to move a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I had to yeah, get, bring it to, back a little bit. I got to move a little bit. <laughs> we, have, we have to understand that, amen, God has a purpose for all of our lives. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. amen. And sometimes we don't understand the purpose God has toward it. That's why we're fighting so hard. Right. And then God sees something, God wants us to go somewhere, but what we do is we fight him. Mm -hmm. Lord, that's not me. Lord, no, that's not me. Lord, that, and Lord, I've done this. Lord, no, God don't care what you've done. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness. Right. Am I right? That's why he sent his son mm -hmm. for a dying world. Yes. Because yes. he knew what we were going to go through. Yes. He knew. He, he knew that our license was like filthy rags. He knew that. Mm -hmm. 
So we got to stop worrying about what people say. Amen. And worry about what God said. Amen. Am I pleasing God? I tell people all the time, who are you trying to please? Man or God? Amen. I don't care what you do, you'll never please man. Right. They're always going to find fault in you somewhere. I don't care. It, you know, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do, what you have, what you accomplish in your life. Amen. Somebody always going to find fault. Amen. Somebody's always going to tell you what you didn't do. Right. But what I found out, you can't worry about other people trying to validate you. Amen. I'm not worried about anybody trying to validate I, I, I want the Lord to validate me. Amen. I want the Lord to say, well done, thou what? Good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what I want to say. Yes. Do I make mistakes? Yes. We all make mistakes. We all sin. Fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans 10 says. So we got to understand that we have an advocate. Amen. Oh, Jesus is our advocate. He talked to the Father on our behalf. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we're going through trial and tribulation. Jesus let him know, look, look, Father, I was there. I went through the same thing that he went through. I did the same thing. The Bible says, listen to this. We have to understand Jesus took on everything that we took on. Amen. And yet had no sin. Amen. Couldn't find no sin in it. So you mean to tell me Jesus can do it? The Bible says we can do these greater works we can do in greater. Amen. So if he didn't, you just got to have faith. Amen. A lot of times you say, well, I can't move my Yes, you can if you have faith. Right. Faith, you can move anything. You got to have faith. What do you mean, Pastor? You have to believe. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Amen. You have to believe. The Bible lets us know all you need is a mustard seed. I said, it starts with a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. The mustard Amen. seed, you can't even see it. Right. You can't see the mustard seed. So that's all God is saying. He needs a mustard seed of faith. And as you go through trial and tribulation, that's how your faith grows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going through trial and tribulation, that's how your faith grows. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your trial is a testimony for somebody else. Amen. I mean, a lot of times God don't bring you through something just to bring you through it. Amen. If he wants you to witness to somebody else yes. who's going through the same thing. Don't you know a lot of times your storm is not for you? Mm -hmm. It's for somebody else. Amen. And while you're going through, you're like, oh, Lord, why? I was going through a storm so bad in my life. I got divorced, and it was just like, felt like, whoo, good God from glory. That was the worst of time in my life. I didn't know what to do. Didn't know, didn't want to come to church. Didn't want to do nothing. And the Lord had to start talking to me. Like, Lord, why are you bringing me through all this? Why is it so hard? Why I can't get I, I don't get it, Lord. I, I couldn't understand it. But as I went through it, and the more I got stronger and stronger, the Lord started building me up again. Then my friend went through the same exact thing. So the Lord said, I brought you through this so you could be a witness to him. Amen. But he was about to really lose his mind. Amen. And sometimes I told him it's not you. Sometimes it's the person. Amen. You can't please everybody. Amen. Hello, somebody. You can't please everybody. Amen. So you have to pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Amen. That means you got to always pray. Amen. And a lot of times, let me tell you something. The devil will make you so busy that you don't have time to pray. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you're trying to have you so busy you don't have time to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have to tell people, don't bother me from this time to this time. That's why I do it early in the morning because people ain't up when I get up. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. birds be bad each other. When I get up, I have to sometimes listen to Y'all out there? Okay, I hear you. <laughs> because I know my phone ain't going to ring. Right. Mm -hmm. It'll like it's going to start calling for nine. Right. So I, I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I know friends and family ain't going to call. Amen. Stores are open to about 10, so they don't need no money to 10. So <laughs> I'm good. Amen. So I, I, I put that, I say that to say this. A lot of times you got to put some time in and you got to dedicate that time to the Lord. Amen. I'm blocking off this time for you, Lord. And don't let nobody, because let me tell you, the devil trying to interrupt. Yes, he He'll try to interrupt. Amen. Sometimes I tell I be on my knees, I fall asleep sometimes. 5 30 early. Mm -hmm. I fall asleep, but I wake up. Lord, what are you trying to tell me, Lord? The Lord tell me, get up, Spirit tell me, get up. Get up. I move around. Go through my house. Pray. It's just me. So I can pray loud as I want. Got nobody telling me to be quiet. Got nobody telling me don't go in there. Lord. I can go in every room and pray. Amen. So you have to understand God's will and prayer. Sometimes we pray for things, but do we really believe what we're praying for? I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we plan for things, but do we really believe in what we're praying for? If you don't believe it, don't pray for it. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it say faith without works is what? Dead. Yeah. So if you don't believe it, just, you know what I mean? Sometimes, and you know I do? And you might not do this, but I said, Lord, uh, manifest that in my life. Mm -hmm. 
I want to see the manifestation of my life. All the stuff that I'm doing, Lord, I, 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 I want to see some fruits mm -hmm. from my labor. Amen. I want to see some fruits. I want people to get saved, delivered, set free. Amen. Amen. I'm not doing this for a show. I'm not doing this for popularity. I'm doing this because I love the Lord. Amen. You, Amen. <laughs> you tell you want to be a pastor, you want to be rich. The pastor ain't the way to go. Let me tell you that now. If you want sanity, oh, back to the lesson. You have to understand, you have to have a heart for God's people. Right, man. Amen. Let me tell you something. You can't be a pastor and don't don't love people. Amen. Because people, especially nowadays, trouble everywhere. Yeah. Trouble. I get more calls from people outside of my church than I do inside the church. Because yeah. people are in trouble. Mm -hmm. People are in trouble. I got a person call me other day and say, my daughter is getting ready to commit suicide. She don't go to my church. Now, I didn't tell her, go talk to your pastor. I said, what do you want to meet you at? Then I circle K and I prayed for her, her mama and her daddy. Amen. And I said, that's a spirit. That's a demon. Amen. Oh, I can't get no Amen. 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 And they were so shocked because they don't go to our church. But I didn't ask him where church you go to. That's not my concern. Amen. She said, I saw your number and we need help. Amen. We need help. Amen. So thank God I was there to help them. Amen. Am I right? See, that's the, that we have to be helpful one to another. To another. Am I right? Yeah. This one, the, the introduction said, the will of God should be what every believer should be trying to do. It is God's divine plan for his world, for his world, and everything and everyone is a part of his world. According to the dictionary, the word <clears throat> in which will means that we wish he has determined what determined will happen. In other words, whatever God said he's going to do it, you got to believe he's going to do it. Amen. 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 He said he might not come when you want him, mm -hmm. but he's always on time. Amen. Well, how do I know that? How do I know he's going to be on time? I experienced it. I witnessed it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Amen. I, I've been to the last. I've been to the last day when I said, Lord, now you said today, right. and it hadn't happened. And all of a sudden, by the time that day was over, he did. He did it. Amen. Yeah. And then you, I had to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Why did I doubt you? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know. I said it's just the enemy. Sometimes we blame too much on the enemy. Right. Now it's just us, and we blame on the devil. The devil made me do a pastor. No, Stop that. Stop that. No, that's choice. That's bad choice. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why the devil made me. We blame so much on him, and he may be sitting there laughing because I said, I ain't even got to you yet. Right. And he's blaming stuff on me. We all have something to do in the kingdom. We all got something to do. My job might not be your job. Your job might not be my job. But we got the Bible says, "Iron sharpens iron." Amen. Am I right? We got to help each other, encourage one another. Amen. Encourage one another. It's all right to say, "Brother Jamal, you're doing all right. right. You're doing a good job, man. Keep up. Keep up the good work." Sister Smile, you're doing a good job. Keep it. It's all right to encourage each other. Amen. I don't know why we find church to be such competition. Yes. We there ain't no competition. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what you do; just do it to the best of your ability. Right. Am I right? We all got something to do. You can't do what I do. I can't do what you do. But just do something. Amen. People say, well, Pastor, I've been looking for a job. You ain't looking for a job. Come to me because I don't get you one. Amen. Amen. I'll get you a job. Don't you worry about that. If you want a job, I'll get you a job. Because many hands make the load lighter. Amen. Am I right? Amen. So a lot of times the enemy helps. The enemy tries to block your blessing. Mm -hmm. See, God, let me tell you something. When God gives, sends you something, he's going to send something to confirm what he sends you. He's never going to give you nothing that he's not going to confirm his word. He's always going to send something, confirmation. Because a lot of times we say, Lord, is this you? And like I said on Sunday, uh, if you want to know it's the Lord, keep it, rebuke it. Right. You can't rebuke himself. Right. You'll know if it's the devil's voice or the Lord's voice. If you rebuke it and it, and it stays strong, that means it's of the law. If you rebuke it and goes away, that's the enemy. Now, don't let, let me tell you something. The enemy will come back. And sometimes he'll come back another way. He ain't going to always come back the same way, y'all. He ain't that stupid. Right. Come on now. He's very smart. Amen. Amen. He, the Bible said he was a smart, he was a beautiful angel. Saying an angelic angel. Very smart. He was too smart for his own good. So I got kicked out because he was too smart. A lot of times, boy, you know what? People think education is a key. And it's not. Education without salvation is damnation. Ooh, I'm say that again. Amen. Education without salvation is damnation. In other words, I'm not much how I educate you are, you're still going to hell. Right. 
So we have to understand, Lord, am I praying or am I praying in a mess? Am I believing what I'm praying for? Am I going to believe? Whatever I pray for, I expect it to happen. Amen. Whatever I prophesy in your life, I expect it to come true. Amen. If it don't, then I'm not going to do it. Amen. I'm not going to do it. Because, I, you know, the Lord, is never, he never going to make me say something that is not going to happen. Everything I say is going to come to pass because I'm not a fake prophet. But I give glory and honor to God because he shows me a lot of things. Amen. Especially when I'm praying in the spirit. He shows me things that sometimes I don't want to see. Amen. And sometimes I can't give it to the person because they want to know how to take it right there. Right. They'll blow their mind. Amen. So I got to give it to them in a little way. Amen. You know? And let me tell you something. The spirit of God will never embarrass you. Amen. Amen. He'll never embarrass you. If you got something to say to somebody that's private, they don't need to hear, you say it in their ear. Amen. Or you tell them I need to talk to you up the Amen. You'll never embarrass somebody right here. It, 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 Amen. That bothers me. Especially when I see a prophet do that to somebody. You want to blast their business all over the church. No, you don't do that. Amen. God, the Holy Ghost is wise. Yes. Yes. The Holy Ghost is wise. Thank if you got something to say to me that I shouldn't be doing, then you'll come tell me. Amen. The Spirit said this. Right. And if it's not, then I'm, I'm no, okay. If I, let me tell you one thing about the Spirit. The Spirit comes to you. The Spirit tell you something, it's, it's confirming. Something you're doing wrong. But if you're coming to me, it's because you got selfish reason, I'm going to tell you, go somewhere. Amen. Now, I'll tell you, but it's me. He said, oh, Lord, Pastor, that. And, and so let me tell you something, Lord, I ain't always tell y'all to come talk to Pastor nowhere. Amen. Yeah, he don't do that. Amen. Amen. It's not your place. Amen. But see, the enemy is so cunning. That's why I was listening, I was listening today. That's saying how the music has gotten so demonic and mm -hmm. all you know, uh, they're talking about this young girl that just got a lot of followers now that I think the Kardashian girl was dressed up like her one day in the mirror start dancing like her. I don't even know her name. She got like red hair or something like that. Oh, yes. Amen. Like a black Annie or something. But this person, the enemy, that's why I tell people on Sundays, watch what your children are listening to. Mm -hmm. Watch the games that your children play on PlayStation or all that mess. Because sometimes it's demonic. Yeah. And it opens up avenues for the demonic spirit to come in. Right. And you wonder why your home is in, a, uh, in an uproar. You allow the spirit to come in. And you don't have enough power to get the spirit out. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful what you let into your house. Even people. Mm -hmm. right. Be careful you let in your house. Right. Be careful you let prayer over you. Be careful you let speak into your life. Because sometimes, let me tell you something. The enemy knows how to get in there. Right. And if you're not careful, he's slick. He's cunning, he's tricky. He'll get into some other avenue. And we wonder why our kids are, we want to commit suicide. They listen to all this music. Yeah. And, he, and the, the guy even said, uh, the guy rapper said, uh, Jay Z, some of this music you listen to and you play it backwards, it gives you a demonic, yeah. a demonic yeah. voice. Yeah. And then we wonder why our kids are out there cutting themselves, right. committing suicide. Don't you know, I saw on CNN last night. The suicide rate for young black people at the 80 some percent. Wow. Now, I'm not trying to be racist, but black people didn't used to kill themselves. No. That wasn't our, our forte. But now, no hope. The enemy is trying to get you. By any means necessary. And that's why you got to pray. Amen. He, he's trying to control, devour, and conquer. Yes. That's what the Bible says. He's not to sift you as weak. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and see, a lot of times, if we don't equip the children for warfare, they don't know what's going on. Right. That voice is telling me to go out in the road. But I don't know why. But that voice is telling me to go out in the road. You, you better get the power to start rebuking it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That voice is telling me that my life is, under, is ended. No, baby. You, you, God give it and God take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can't take nothing. Mm -hmm. You ain't yours to take. I tell people all the time, God didn't give you this life to take. Right. It's not yours. When he's ready for you to come home, he'll call for you. Amen. He'll call for you. You want them angels? Gabriel, Michael, go get them. Time to come. It's time to come home. So that's why the enemy, I tell you a lot of times, and people think I'm playing, but if you try this, you can't go to sleep at night and start reading your Bible. <laughs> when you can't go to sleep, you know, sometimes you're just up. Yeah. The other night, I was just up for some reason. You know, things going through my mind. I'm up, thinking. God, I'm doing this. God, 
church. I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. Couldn't sleep. I watched sports in a lot. Well, I watched Hamilton. I kind of love it. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I got my Bible. And as soon as I started reading, I opened up to the book of Psalms. And as soon as, as, soon as I started reading one verse, all of a sudden, I just got sleep. <laughs> well, the devil said, boy, you're sleeping at me. <laughs> And soon I close my Bible, I'll wake right back up. <laughs> so you know what I did? Happy feet too. I opened it up and put it on my chest. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Open it up and put it on my chest. Amen. So if I fall asleep, I fall asleep in the Word. Yeah. Amen. See, we got to understand this. We got to understand this in the time that we're living in. The Bible calls this perilous times. Mm-hmm. Perilous times, bad times. Amen. You, you, you see what's going on. You know, men become lovers of men, women become lovers of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, if we, we're turning into a sign of Omar. That's what's really happening. Amen. Now, you know, gender identification. Yes. So we're going to change. I'm born this way, but I want to change. Right. It's not for you to change. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand this, and I'm not trying to be hard, I'm not trying to be mean. God makes no mistake. Right. If, he, if you born a man, that's what he wanted. Right. If you born a woman, that's what he wanted. Right. Who are we to change something that God has given us? Mm-hmm. And see, anytime you go against God, God will turn yourself over to you. The worst thing you can do is self-destruct. Yeah. Right. He'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. You'll believe wrong is right and right is wrong. And that's what's happened in the world. Amen. We have took Christ out of school, right. out of our home out of our church. We took Christ out of everything. Mm-hmm. But then we called on him to do so much. But then we don't we ain't doing nothing for him. Right. We're not witnessing to people. Mm-hmm. We're not telling people to come to church. Mm-hmm. We're not telling people, you know what I mean? And we live in a wholehearted life ourselves. Mm-hmm. One minute we in the church, and then we out. One minute we in, and then we out. No yeah. stability. Right. The Bible says hot and cold can't run from the same time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't be lukewarm. Either you're going to be hot or cold. The Bible says, I'll, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So we have to be careful. Because let me tell you something. Folks are looking at your life. You say you're a child of God. Folks are looking at your life. You say you're a king child. Folks are looking at your life. You can't say you're going to church and you're out there doing anything and everything. It might not be a sin, but it can be a weight. Didn't the Bible say, lay aside every sin and weight that so easily besets you? Mm-hmm. Might not be a sin, but you don't need to. You know, how would I look? You know, my, my friend, you know, see, this is like, let me try how to trick the devil here. This way, uh, I, my friend was talking about eating. And he know I like uh, crab legs on that. Mm-hmm. And he said, Pastor Strong, he said, I know you don't like this. But he said, oh, they have a casino, they have a buffet. Mm-hmm. And your crab legs, mm-hmm. $10.99. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can eat. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. They will start talking to me. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no crab legs. I have to have the crab legs over there, uh, English, English crab, and uh, it was eighty dollars. <laughs> wow. The devil said, "You going over there and get ten ninety nine? All you can eat?" Yeah, temptation. Temptation, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. So he started trying to get the little mouses up there turning. Right. And I said, and I told him, <coughs> and I had to come back to myself. Well, that sounds so good. You know, this way, this is how the devil set you up. I know you, Reverend. I know you say. I know you're a preacher. You ain't got to go in there and gamble. It's not that. You know what I told him? What if somebody see me coming out of there? Mm-hmm. Well, you just ate. But they don't know that. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. They weren't in there when I was eating. Right. So they see me coming out. First thing they don't say is, I saw Pastor Strong coming out the other night. Uh-huh. And they see people put two and a ten. All I saw with tickets in the hand, he must have won something. Mm-hmm. Right. Or you was playing the buffalo. Yeah, something. <laughs> something. No not one ain't going to New Jersey out there gambling. Right, not knowing. <laughs> not knowing what's going on. Right. No one today ain't got no money in the church. He's taking all the money in gambling. And that's how he does it. And that's how people do it. The people start, ooh, chat, you hear about that? And, they, and they, you know how rumors start, right? Yeah. Rumors, y'all, they go all over the world. Right. Right. Rumor, right. Before you know it, you famous on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's why God. I told my son the other day, I said, I'm so glad Facebook went around when I was doing my dirt. Because mm. if it was, I'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I've been in a lot of trouble. So I said, Lord, you got me out just in time. <laughs> I said, you got me out just in time. Because your Facebook, that put you on blast. Yeah. When I was there, I'd be like, it wasn't me. I'm walking out, but it wasn't me. Yeah, I saw you, know, you didn't see me, it wasn't me. <laughs> but now, they go back to Facebook and say, yeah, it was you. Look, I got you. I recorded you. Social media. And that's what the church is turning to. Social media. Yeah. 
That's why people don't want to come to church no more. Uh oh, my time is coming to an end. We got any questions? Let me let me ask you. you got any questions before? Hey man, I, I read this last central verse. Any questions? Any comments? It's just not me talking. You can talk. Yes. The subject is God's will and prayer. Um, lately we've been praying about um, having our ears open and having our eyes, um, taking the scales off our eyes. And, um, and like I said, when we, when we pray, we need to believe what we're praying. And because um, God hears our prayers. And um, like I said, we've been praying that prayer for, for a few weeks now. And yesterday I was trying to go um, get a hold of a client, you know, to schedule an appointment for today. And, um, and I'm like, I was calling and calling and texting, and I'm like, I'm like, look, what is, you know? <laughs> so, so I was ready to go home, and I was just like, someone said, you know, go by, go do a drive by, mm -hmm. and when I when I turned around and um, I started to go turn down the complex, I heard the word relapse, mm -hmm. and I didn't think nothing of it. So I, you know, went, pulled up to the person's um, place, and I knocked on the door, and. Um, Open, he's like, and I was like, I said, man, what's going on? And he, that's what he said. He goes, I had a relapse. Oh. I said, you can't tell. I, he don't know, but I said, I, yeah, I pointed. I said, you can't tell me God ain't real. Yeah. I said, the Holy Ghost is real. I said, I said, I promise you. I said, when I pulled down the street, I heard the word relapse. And he said it had just happened three days ago. Yeah. He said that it was the most meth that he had smoked oh in a long God. time, had been clean for like three or four years, oh and so I was just like, I was ready to turn around, but I was like, some said pray with him, and I didn't, and he was surprised I wanted to hold his hands, but I was just like, no, we're going to pray, but I, I, had, I had empathy for him because, you know, he had a relapse, I said, but God hasn't thrown you away, I said, God Amen. had his That's hand right. of protection on you, right. I mean, I lost my brother to meth. You know, I said, it's but there's right. a plan. Mm -hmm. right. It's still a will, right. you know. So my brother wasn't saved from it, but, you know, this guy can be. So yeah. I just thank God for God's will and actually having the ear to hear, yeah. you know, what, you know, like I said, I didn't know what I was walking into. And then today when I saw him again, um, I just told him, I said, um, I said, you know, do you have a Bible? And he was like, oh, I ain't read the Bible in so, in so long. I said, that's all right. You've got the internet. He had the big old screen TV. Amen. I said, pull it up on there. And I said, if you don't read nothing else, just read Psalms 23. Amen. I said, because I said, even if you stop that, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. That's right. enough. And he was like, so he's like, I, I think I can find my Bible. So I just thank God, you know, that I did hear his voice. And, um, and stood on his word, you know, Amen. that, you know, he can be set free. I said, yes, you made a mistake. I said, we all have. Right. I said, but you can come back from it. I said, well, how many days has it been? I said, what, three or four days? And he said, yeah. I said, I thank God for your four days of sobriety. Amen. So I just thank God for God's will. So Amen. continue to keep praying and, and do his will. Right. Amen. 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 All right, we thank God for that. Uh, Sister uh, Gloria. Uh, Correct. Can you read the discussion, please? Yes, please. God has plans for every believer. However, just because he has plans for them does not mean the believer will accept God's plans. It is necessary for believers to know and understand that life doesn't automatically follow God's plan. Just because he has them, he must remember that he is dealing with forces of evil that will do whatever is necessary to keep him out of the will of God. For Satan and his demons come to steal, kill, and to destroy whatever is good in the lives of believers. Ooh. When the disciples came to Jesus and asked him to teach them how to pray, one of the things that Jesus taught was to say, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 and 10. There is no sin, no sickness, no trouble in heaven because that is part of God's will for the believer. Jesus knew what God's will was for him, but he still had to pray until his body became willing to obey God. Mm. 
His spirit was willing at all times to obey God, but there were times when his flesh just how, ooh, just had not gone, gotten there yet. Ooh, glory. Likewise, the believer must pray until he has control over, it, over his flesh. Mm. So he can be in the will of God. The flesh is enmity against God and does not want to become subject to God's will. Mm -hmm. But praying in the spirit will subdue the flesh mm -hmm. and make it willing to submit to God's will. Mm -hmm. To be carnal minded is death. And the flesh would not obey God without having the spirit of righteousness in him. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8 and 14. Amen. 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 So we can't let our flesh override us. Amen. So do any good thing come out of the flesh? No. No good thing come out of the flesh. Our flesh and our spirit, man, war all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because your flesh want to do something. Your spirit, man, want to walk righteous, but your flesh don't. Right. You have to keep your flesh under subjection. That's why you fast and pray. Amen. That keeps your flesh under subjection. So, Sister Carlisle, can you read the conclusion, please? Amen. Can you read that conclusion? Jesus said, in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Matthew 21 and 22. He then told the story of a man who had two sons. He came to the first son and asked him to go to his vineyard and work. And his first son said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. He then went to the second son and asked him. And he said that he would go, but did not go. Then Jesus asked, which of the two sons did the will of his father? They answered the first. Then Jesus told them that the publicans and the harlots would go into the kingdom of God before him because John taught the way of righteousness and the publicans and the harlots believed and repented. But they did not believe and did not repent. If a person is not doing God's will and hears the truth and repents, he finds himself in God's will. Matthew 21, verses 21 through 22. The word of the Lord tells the believer to not to be unwise, but to learn and understand that God's will demands that the believer repent and embrace his will. Whatever the first son felt that he had to do, he pushed it aside because his father wanted him to work in his vineyard. He went ahead and did it. Just, just as obedient children want to please their fathers in the natural, so do spiritual children want to please their heavenly father. They want the approval and the love of the father, so they do what <coughs> pleases him. Furthermore, the believers are of the royal family of God, so they must maintain a certain decorum. Their behavior must be in line with God's will. They want their thoughts, feelings, and actions to be in God's will. Amen. 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 So tonight's lesson, uh, once again, God's will and prayer. So we have to understand, a lot of times when we're praying, we're asking God for something, amen. Uh, I think the question was asked, do we keep praying, do we keep asking God over and over again? And I told a person, I'll keep asking until I see it done. Amen. I'm going to keep asking until it. Do I believe he's going to do it? Yes. Yeah. But I don't think it's you no know, uh, sin or anything to keep asking for it. Amen. You know what I mean? The manifestation comes later. Amen. Amen. So, you know, whatever you have, petition you have for, before God, just keep talking to him. Amen. You know, I, I told the Lord, I said, I, I, I got two kids I need to be saved. Amen. So I keep I, I, every morning, every night, before, Lord, save my children. Say, I don't want to see my kids go to hell. Lord, mm -hmm. save my, you know, because they're not under me no more. They're grown now. Mm -hmm. So, I, Lord, they're not under my covering. Mm -hmm. You know? So I told my son, I said, it'd be a sad day. Your dad is a preacher. Preach this long, and you bust hell wide open. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it'd be a sad day. Nobody want to see their child go to hell. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I said, you don't want to see that. So I pray, Lord, please touch my son. You know? But like I told him, you, you, you're 34 years old. So that's you. My youngest is 25. That's you, you, you got to make up in your mind. Amen. I would love for you to come to church. I, I tell you that all the time. Come to church. Not doing. You know, I'm, the, I'm a father like this. You don't have to come to my church. Go to church. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, lying to me. Right? Oh, I'm coming next week. Next week ain't got it yet. But I'm still praying. Amen. I haven't given up yet. Right. Amen. Amen. I told the Lord, Lord, I'm not giving up because I'm on restoration of my home. 
Amen. They don't live with me, but I, I want them to be saved. Amen. I want them to enjoy the fruits of the Spirit. I want them to enjoy the life being saved. Amen. It's a benefit to being saved, y'all. Yes, it is. Benefits, yes, you're not always going, it's always going to be peaches and cream. But I like that I can go to God. Lord, I love I can go. Lord, Amen. take take your burden to the Lord leading that. Amen. Amen. I love that I can go. Yes. Do things get hard? Yes. Mm -hmm. It gets hard for a lot of folk. Right. Do I quit because it gets hard? No. Nope. Do I give up because it gets hard? No. It will hold no good thing for them that walk up right before you. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we'll be on the brink. But I, I just believe, like I said, I'm getting ready to close. I'm coming and bringing it in. I think about Jacob. When Jacob wrestled with that angel, I always think about this when I'm going through hard trials and, and tribulations hitting my belly. Jacob wrestled with that angel all night alone. Amen. Now, can you imagine wrestling with something all night alone? The Bible said he wrestled until him until his hip came out of socket. Wow. That means he would wrestle with that angel. Some of you see angels, y'all probably be too scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told the Lord. The Lord now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see his face in Lord, Lord, I mean, you make your, just your power and your voice <laughs> alone. If you ever had a little encounter with God, I'm telling you, it's something that you'll never, ever forget. Amen. It's something I'm telling you. Amen. One time, you know, uh, this was uh, some years ago before I, I was pastoring. I went in my room and, you know, I had got a little upset with the Lord because I felt like, you know, at the church I was at, things weren't going right. And, couldn't, you know, I just couldn't see my way. I was upset with the past. I was just a lot of things was going on. And I got in my prayer closet and I said, Lord, you know what? I'm tired. I quit. Man, I'm just not going to do it no more. I, I just, I said, if you don't come down here and tell me and show me something, I am not doing it no more. All of a sudden, something hit the, pow! Whoa. I'm sitting in my room and I'm like, ain't nobody in this book. <laughs> <Boy. laughs> you talking about trying to get out that dough. <laughs> Seemed like the whole house was spinning. Ooh, and I was just sitting and I couldn't move. And he was just talking to me. You think? I mean, he whooped me so good. <laughs> yes, 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 he whooped me so good. <laughs> well, you're talking about repentance. <laughs> when I got up from that flow, but I couldn't get up. I hear me on the flow. I was rolling, foaming, everything. And when I got up from that flow, I said, Lord, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I said, I'm going back and I'm going to repent. I went to the pastor and called him and repented. Said, Look, you don't have to whoop me no more. I repent that I even said that to you. I repent that I even went that way. Right. And that's what he'll do. Don't you don't want to tell him to show? And he, he, if you're not ready for him to show you something, don't leave. Right. You got to be in position. Right. Amen. Because he will he will come. Yes, he will. And he will show up. Yes, and you will hear his voice. Oh yeah. And let me tell you something. It's something that you will never ever, and you will never tell him to do it again. And trust me. Mm -hmm. Right. You will never say, Lord, ah, you know, Lord, you don't have to come that way no more. Oh, yeah, you'll show me a sign or something. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I know you're real. I felt you. I know. Because sometimes you need reassurance. Right. You know, you've been praying for something, and you Lord, I'm just, sometimes you just get to your wits in. Yes. And we're human. 100% human. Right. And sometimes the Lord has to show you. Amen. But the Bible says chasing them that he loves. Sometimes you have to spank us, put him back in line. Right. Amen. He'll spank you. Don't trust me. He'll spank you. He'll spank you more than one way. He'll make you lose everything you have. I lost everything I had. Good job. Money. Whew. And he stripped me down to nothing. To the point where I couldn't, he didn't have a dollar in my pocket. And he said, give me this one. So know what I do, Lord? I said, Lord, I ain't got nothing. What do I do? He said, I broke you for a reason. Woo. And I told him, Lord, you don't ever have to do that again. I said, if you real build me up, you build me up, I won't be so stingy. I was stingy. Ooh, I'm stingy. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, halfway pay my time. I have my, I get a bonus, and I'm like, uh-uh, church ain't getting in. Uh-uh, no, pastor ain't getting my money. Uh-uh, no. Ain't buying a Cadillac with my money. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking all these crazy thoughts. Right. Yeah. And when he stripped me from all that, he, everything I said seemed like it came back to haunt me. What I would have done, what I should have done, what I didn't do. You know, just things. Right. Going out and buying stuff. Didn't need it. Just bought it because I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? When you had it, you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But I told him that. I said, Lord, if you ever bring me back, I said, you'll never have to worry about me doing that again. Mm -hmm. I said, if you ever restore me, 
Woo. Thank God he restored me. And I ain't missed a tie statement in over 20-something years. Amen. And it ain't going to stop. Amen. Because I know what he can do. He blowing you. Man. Life. Man. You're talking about I slept in a truck. I slept in my truck for days. Didn't have enough money. And you know what? People won't let you in either. Don't think family friends going to let you in. Mm -hmm. I went to a family. Remember how I thought we were close? We were supposed to be real buddy in church. Say, yeah, sanctified exactly. through the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, you can stay here for 24 hours. 24 hours? Wow. I said, 24 hours? I said, don't, don't even worry about it. I ain't even coming for 24 hours because I'm going to be mad when I got to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm going to go into the park. I went to the park, part of my truck, and slept there. It was so bad the police would knock on the door early in the morning. But then I got acquainted with him. Amen. He knew it was me. He said, no, you ain't doing nothing, Reverend. And then, you know what? Sometimes it made me feel bad because he called me Reverend. Oh, and then he'll say, Reverend, you out here sleeping in the car, and you paying tithes for your church, and your church can't help you? No, it can't help you. But I say, you know what? God is still good. Amen. Amen. I told God is still good. Amen. Don't know what I'm going to eat today, right. but God is still good. Right. Amen. Don't know why I'm going to take a bath. Sometimes you have to go in the park. I'll tell you, this is a testimony. I'm not lying to you. Yeah, I, love you. I would go into the park, you know, in the bathroom, in the water. Yeah. Wash up. Didn't have no razor. None. Amen. Didn't have no hat. I had, had a comb, so I could put a hat on. <laughs> so I was good. Still ain't got no hair. Yeah, I didn't have no hair. So I had to put a hat on and keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy but he gave me enough to keep going. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I come from a time where I wouldn't step outside without taking a shower. You couldn't get me. I had to hide my old, my clothes on, iron, everything, t shirt, everything. And the Lord took me from that mm -hmm. to show me that's all vain. You ain't got me. I'm nothing. Right. Right. So he had to strip me. Yeah. And I told the Lord, Lord, please, whatever you do in this season, mm -hmm. don't do it without me. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. We thank you tonight for Bible study. Thank you for you that came out. Let me tell you something. Bible study is so important. Next week, bring somebody with you. Amen. Next week, bring somebody with you to Bible study. Because let me tell you something, this is the only thing that's going to help you. Amen. Especially in these last and evil days. The enemy ain't playing with us, y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen. The enemy is not playing. He is trying his best to destroy us. Mm -hmm. That's his job. Mm -hmm. He's doing his job. Are we on our? Right. Are we on our job? So tonight, amen, remember to keep God first. Amen. You're going to go through some hard times. But keep God first. And it's so good to have, uh, I forgot her name, daughter. Uh, what's her name? Mila. Mila. Mila, so good to have Mila with us. Amen. Let's give Mila a hand. Amen. 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 I want to say come back and be with us next week. Amen. Next week we'll be talking about, uh, amen, we soon go to find the book. Amen. We didn't get these books for nothing. Hello, somebody. Amen. Making prayer a priority. Amen. Next week we're talking about making prayer a priority. In other words, you got to you got to prioritize your life, mm -hmm. especially your prior life. How much time are you gonna spend with God? That's what I want you to think about this week. Next week, how much time I'm gonna spend with God? I'm gonna give five minutes. I'm gonna give ten minutes. Increase your time. I don't know about that's what I do. I, I, every week, I say, Lord, I gave you an hour. You hour and a half next week. Amen. Like this week in fasting, I consecrated for two hours. No TV, no phone, no nothing. I ain't turning nothing on. Sit there and quiet. And you'll see what kind of peace you'll get. Peace that passes all understanding. While with itself, I was so peaceful. And you know what? God was so good, the phone didn't even ring. Amen. Now, use my phone ring every five minutes. Dee -dee -dee. Oh, I get a text. Something. Right. Somebody knows something. <laughs> but it didn't ring. And I said, God, ain't nobody but you. Amen. Ain't nobody but you. So guess what? God gave me an idea. This week, well, that's it then. Wednesday and Friday. And we're going to be consecrated. Amen. 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 Now I think Wednesday I got up at 3.30 or something. Tuesday at 3.30, 12.30. Wednesday I got up at about 4 or 5. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, Lord bless. Tomorrow, Friday? Yeah. I don't know where I'm going to drop tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
you get off when the Lord kick you off. Amen. Amen. I usually go to like 10 o'clock. Ten o'clock. Not always 12, but 10. 10. Okay. That's Tomorrow 10. go to 11. Okay. Amen. Stretch it out. Amen. And watch, and watch what the Lord do for you. And his second uh, client, my boss, told me today he's going to give me another client. See, not, see? Amen. see? You go another hour, you might be another client. Amen. Amen. You never know what God's going to do. Amen. 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 So we think, am I off again? No. No, you're still going. I'm still going? Okay. Yeah. Well, God bless you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for joining us tonight. Remember, next week, right here, Thursday night. God bless you. Smile. Amen. Amen. Amen.